Hey, there's the box next to your bag from the market. George hadn't noticed the bag. The market bag means we must have gone to the market before we came here. That means we left home, bought fruit, ate soup, I fell in the lake, went to the museum. Remember, George? We almost lost all the bones here. The delivery guy took the wrong box. Still four bones. Oh, George, how many times have we practiced wiping your mouth after eating soup? After eating soup? You had soup before we went to the park. That means we went to Paschetti's, then the park. <laughs> ah, we figured out our path. We left home, bought fruit, ate soup, I fell in the lake, museum. The box is bulging. We still had all four bones in the park. <laughs> so the bone has to be between the lake and the museum. Ah. Oh, this looks bad. Bad, bad, bad. Is there any chance they'll find that bone before five? <laughs> but it must be here if we went right from the park to the museum. <laughs> The pictures had to be in the right order, didn't they? <gasps> yes, I'm drippy because I fell in the lake. What is it? I'm wet, then we deliver it, and I'm dry. That's right, I forgot. We went home again. The lobby wasn't just the first step on their path, it was also the next to last step. So we left home, bought fruit, ate soup, I fell in the lake, went home again to get dry museum. <laughs> sure I remember. You left the box in the lobby while you changed. Then your friend took that picture as you left in the dry clothes. George noticed something else. What was that white blur? Huh? <laughs> George, please, wait a second. If I explain, maybe he can help find the bone. <laughs> the bone! Hunley, where did you find that? <laughs> Hunley knew exactly where he found it. Why don't you take a break? There's a surprise for you on the chair. Uh, hurry, we have one minute to get to the museum. Oh, this is going to be so embarrassing. Ladies and gentlemen, I know what you're all hoping for. <laughs> okay, it's done. Let's go. No! Oh. George, I'm stuck. I apologize for what you are about to see. <gasps> Look! <sighs> The oldest complete Ankylosaurus, over there! How can I ever thank you for keeping this from being embarrassing?
George was really hungry. But his order only had a measly one on it. Huh. Huh? Then he remembered what the man with the yellow hat had told him about zeros. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> George, Chucky, good to see ya. Oh, is that an order for your friend with the yellow hat? <laughs> One hundred dozen? Oh, our biggest order ever! Oh, he must be having a giant donut party! George realized what his zeros had done. <coughs> but try explaining that to a dog. Okay, now, where did I leave that piece of paper? I misread the order. It's one thousand dozen. Oh, this is the biggest day in the entire history of donuts. We'll have to have more donuts flown in from other towns. Oh. <laughs> Let's see, there's five dozen, ten, fifteen dozen. Hmm, my mistake. It's one hundred. This was still more donuts than one little monkey could ever eat. Or maybe not. 99? Oh, 100. Oh, you can't carry it all. Kids, we have a delivery! George could only think of one solution to a problem this big. So, George headed home with one dozen donuts, and everything was perfect. <laughs> Wait! I don't have your address! <laughs> he must be late. <laughs> Doorman! <laughs> Mmm, wow, those smell so good. I'm sorry I didn't ask you to buy more than one dozen. <laughs> you look hungry, George. I'll make eggs, then it's donut time. It's a little dark in here. I'll open some curtains. So, anything exciting happened today, George? <laughs> I passed by the D family. They look pretty happy. Did you put that donut there? Oh, what a waste of food. Now we only have 11 to eat. Here's the, say, where'd they all go? A, uh, what? A hundred dozen donuts. A hundred do, we have one dozen donuts? Look. <laughs> well, Miss Donuts asked me to give you the bill. Wow, what a mistake. How could they think you bought a hundred dozen don- what? <sighs> well, at least I know you were paying attention. We've got to put these donuts in bags or something. <laughs> oh, what are we going to do with them all? <laughs> so in the end, George got one dozen donuts, like he was supposed to. And the hard-working firefighters thought everything was perfect. How many left, George? <laughs> the rug made for good toe squishing. So it would probably be fun to jump on. <laughs> George had to get that juice off the rug. <laughs> Soap. Soap clean stuff. Bubble bath would make it smell good.
but there was something missing. George had to get all those suds out of the house so he could see if the rug was clean. George was happy he spotted the glass of juice. That could have caused a real mess. Grape juice must help you think because George suddenly remembered when the Rinkins' basement flooded. <laughs> this is when good watch pigs go get their farmer. They needed a gate opener pig. How could such a little monkey move a big, heavy pump? George could use a bike to move the pump. Even with wheels, George needed help to pull it all the way back to the house. The goat sure liked to pull. He was the perfect choice. Or maybe the pigs would do it. But when he opened the gate, they ran to do their watch pig duties and get their farmer. Wasn't there anybody who'd help? The chicks were willing. But the cow was a lot stronger. <laughs> All right, got it. What is it? Something wrong? Oh, I think they're trying to tell us something. They're trying to tell us all the pigs are loose. Get them! <laughs> that cow was so good at towing a pump that it went right past her. <laughs> Before long, he'd pumped all the water out of the house. George, I'm home. Wow, that new rug makes the whole room look cleaner. George, come see what I bought. George? George knew the room was still a little squishy. But he had the feeling there was something else he forgot. Whatever he forgot, he knew he was going to hear about it soon enough. Now George realized he had to get the feeder far from the tree trunk so Jumpy couldn't jump to it. No squirrel could jump from the tree trunk all the way over here. Wow. 
Problem solved. <laughs> Dropping straight down seemed dangerous. Then, Jumpy discovered he had another choice. George? You sure you don't want to come to the Rankins? You can work the sump pump. George wanted to stay here and watch happy birds eat. Jumpy was at home in trees, so George needed to move the feeder away from trees. But where? There's only one way to stop this squirrel. George stood guard, making sure the birds got their food. This worked. <laughs> he didn't move from that spot till the feeder was empty. This much. What was he doing with it all? Jumpy wasn't eating the food. But why was he bringing it here? That's the bowl Bill always filled with squirrel food. Of course. Bill wasn't around to fill it, so Jumpy was doing it. So George brought over plenty of food, and Jumpy left the bird feeder alone. There had to be plenty of food, because Jumpy wasn't the only one dining. <laughs> Even with no bunnies to feed, it turned out to be a pretty nice weekend in the country. <laughs> Though this food was definitely for the birds. George, maybe this is 20 pounds. It 
it sounded like a bunch of accordions. Take a look! <laughs> that gave George an idea. In the meantime, Jumpy had grown curious about the box, too. A box that big might have a lifetime supply of nuts. Ah! <gasps> it moved! I heard it move! Hello, Mr. Goat! Hello! <laughs> oh, it was just a squirrel. He was probably having a play date with the goat. Sounds like a bunch of cans of soup. Who sends cans of soup? Unless they put cans of soup in there for the goat to eat. Grown-ups send weird things. My aunt once sent me underwear for my birthday. I'd rather have soup. George could feel something inside the box. It was another clue. What it felt like. Whatever it was, it was round and hard and covered in stiff hair. Like a goat. Could it be? Told you. Goats were smelly. Uh -huh. But the box smelled like, well, George didn't know exactly what, but it didn't smell like goat. <laughs> that does not smell like a goat. Maybe it had a bath. Grandma always makes me take a bath before I go on a trip. Could it be a very clean goat? Look! It's a delivery truck! Ah. He must be here to pick up the box. George didn't want to say goodbye to the box until he figured out what was inside. Please, don't take it yet. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, sorry, I've got my orders. But, mister, we still haven't figured out what's inside. Yes, we have. It's a goat. Huh? Ooh, 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 ooh. George, we can't keep it. We don't even know who it's for. It's for you! We left it here this morning. Why haven't you opened it? Oh, this was from you? It's a little present to thank you for helping us with the volcanoes. Yes, I, I often wonder how other scientists manage without a monkey. <laughs> sure, go ahead, George. George couldn't wait to meet his new goat or eat soup, whichever it was. <laughs> Do you know what those are, George? <laughs> George knew furry bowling balls when he saw them. <laughs> no, George, those are coconuts. <laughs> so that was coconut water sloshing, not soup. And this isn't goat hair, it's coconut hair. Gee, you flew all this way just to give us coconuts? No, much more. Straws, lays, shirts, hey, <laughs> neat. Oh, another box to open, George. What is all this? <laughs> a luau in a box. Uh -huh. We'd have stayed when we dropped the box off earlier, but uh, we left our ukuleles in our other lab coats. <laughs> lesson today. Uh -huh. A box can weigh, feel, and sound like a goat, but if it doesn't smell like a goat, it's probably coconuts. Uh -huh. George couldn't live in a tree and stay dry like he could in the house. Unless he had a tree house. 
The next morning, George got to work. He picked the perfect branch. He chose his material, cardboard, from the refrigerator box. He definitely needed something less bendy. You like the new hen house I'm building? Of course. George needed a plan. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Armed with his handy monkey tool set, George was ready to build. So that's what the goggles were for. <laughs> this wall needed something to hold it up while he nailed it down. Just one wall to go. Huh. But George was out of nails. And the only wood left was the piece he couldn't lift. <laughs> Luckily, Mrs. Rankins told him he could have any wood he wanted. <laughs> Mr. Quint wasn't home. But George had seen him get nails this way. George figured a treehouse didn't need a wood roof, especially since he was out of wood. Yeah, how do you like your new... Oh, oh. <laughs> All fixed and solid as a rock. Maybe you should have used nails. <laughs> oh, I'm dying to know what you've been up to. Can I look yet? Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it? Is, is it a house? I'm, I mean, it's a house. You built your own tree house. Wow. I am very impressed. Say, where did you get all the wood and nails George! and... George! <laughs> did you take my chicken's wall? George, did you take nails from my dock? Because, look, uh, I'm wet. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm, I'm sure it was a mistake. <laughs> He'll give everything back, George. Before he'd had a chance to make even one house rule, George had to take his treehouse apart. Wait, I said you could have any nails you wanted. I could have been more specific. Then I can make a new wall. That one looks like it belongs there. Now George had a place where he made the rules. Rule number one, you have to draw on the walls. And rule number two, always butter your corn with your feet. Oh, this, this isn't easy. <laughs> House rules, <laughs> I know. Okay. 
Ah. Had to deliver you from Natoya's cleaners. <laughs> no, thank you. If everybody had a monkey, I'd be rich. <laughs> the hat was home. Everything was perfect. That was a funny smell for a clean hat. Huh? Why, it smelled just like garbage? <laughs> George, don't go in there! Ah, <laughs> oh, if you threw something away by mistake, It'll be in the dumpster downstairs. Come on! Phew! Which is what she was doing at that very second. Uh-oh! Huh? Well, the garbage truck came. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> Why aren't you home, waiting for the hat? Ooh, oh, did it come already? <laughs> Empty cans meant the truck had already been here. Except that one. <laughs> you think I forgot to put those out? No. They pick up bottles and paper for recycling tomorrow. Oh. Trash goes straight to the landfill where they dump everything. Ah. George had finally made it to the landfill where all the trucks dump their trash from the city. Finding one yellow hat in all this trash was going to be impossible. Without my yellow hat, I I'm not me! But George didn't know the meaning of the word impossible. <laughs> I found it in my truck. Who would throw out such a perfect hat? I've wanted a hat like this ever since I saw a guy with a monkey wearing one. Is that why you hired a monkey? Huh? Stop! You're making a mess of my garbage! looking for the hat. supposed to put all these boxes in the trash. <laughs> oh, imagine if I'd thrown this out. How terrible would that have been? <laughs> Wait, 
okay. Wait, okay, I want to go back. How's this? Uh, no, this. George, cut that out! George did his part to help the man give his best smile. Oh, man. George thought it was a great picture. <laughs> the hat looked perfect. Right outside, it was the best game of Cat Tries to Catch a Plane ever. <laughs> Until... This wasn't here before. It must be what they made from those bones. Gnocchi oh. wanted that plane. George wanted to help Gnocchi get down, but he couldn't reach her. Just because it came apart doesn't mean it's ruined, George. <laughs> but maybe it mattered which bone went where. All right, let's see my skeleton. But, but we just ordered dessert. Uh, dessert? Oh, oh, of course, sorry. of course, this memory of mine. But I'm anxious to know how you've handled my precious bones. George's skeleton didn't look as good as that other one. Even though they looked almost the same before. If they look the same... He could figure out where the bones belonged by using the other one as a guide. <laughs> George compared every bone and sorted them by size and shape. So before he put them together, he knew exactly what went where. Since George was done sorting the bones, Gnocchi figured she'd mix them up so he could play again. <laughs> <laughs> so, am I forgetting anything? Or is it now time to see how you've taken care of my baby? <sighs> it's time. Oh, I'm nervous. You have nothing to be nervous about whatsoever. George had one side of the skeleton finished when he noticed <laughs> both sides looked the same except opposite. He could finish by matching the remaining bones to what he'd already done. <laughs> Gnocchi wished this bone game would end so they could play something <laughs> cats were good at. I'll admit I'm worried. No one else but I has ever handled those bones before today. Only our best people have been involved. <laughs> oh! Oh, boy. Your best people are a monkey and a cat. George! <laughs> well... This isn't the skull we put on it. It seems George was switching them. I don't know why. I do. The monkey's right. The, the monkey's, monkey's right? <laughs> that old skull never looked right. I think George has correctly matched the cranial structure. Huh? 
Now I wish I'd loaned this out years ago. I want George to check all my future work. <laughs> and that went on record as the first scientific discovery made by a monkey. <laughs> Assisted by a cat from an Italian restaurant. Yeah.